Welcome to the Reverberations Podcast, where we explore the human experience and the journey of self-discovery. What is good, everyone? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Reverberations. In the last episode, we shared the journey of how my men's program came to light. Embrace the Fire Within actually goes back to a workshop I did several years back with one of my former partners. Its roots are in how to alchemize our core trauma within partnership. It was so potent that actually my partner who was doing it with me uh, bowed out of it and was unable to do her part. And I did the entire workshop myself and then vowed to never do it again. Now, it was so powerful because of what came forward. What came forward was how we can utilize our passion, how we can dial in to our purpose, how we can be so present in partnership that we can alchemize whatever our core trauma is when we lean in and support one another in that process. Now, this is like the origin story of where I've shifted that practice from the dynamic of being in partnership to really owning and alchemizing our own story, our core shit, by embodying what we learn as practical wisdom. We activate and we express our inner fire. We embrace the fire within, within ourself. When our integration is embodied, we express our passion, we embody our purpose, we emanate presence. And in my practice of integrative wellness, it's transformational in the capacity that it goes beyond form, beyond the tangible, though it's what's real, relatable, it's who we are. We embody our heartfelt desire, our soul's yes, our most intimate and expansive vision of what we know to be true. We are integrated, we are embodied, we are whole in all our humanness. We accept every part of who we are, we are perfectly imperfect, where we give ourselves permission to be ourself. We lean into the discomfort while minding our bigness, releasing the pressure of performance and achievement, or the fear of rejection, abandonment, failure, or success. We call it by its name when it shows up. It empowers us. We feel more alive. What a feeling it is when we embody these three pillars. So let's take a deeper look into the three pillars of embodied integration. Passion. We are fully activated and expressive. We're in our fire. There's a wildness and a casual confidence rooted in honor, loyalty, and discernment. We explore the depths of intimacy and the expanses of liberation with genuine curiosity. It's the act of devotion to our purpose. We are fully alive. Each moment is an opportunity to be love, to be loved, to create love, to have a sensual experience right here and now. Our sacral is charged and activated with healthy life force, creative life force, prepared to birth wonder into existence. Our seed becomes seen. Now, passion is the energetic creative potential, the creative impulse. It is what gives birth to our heartfelt desire. It is what generates. It is what enlivens. It is what colors. It is what activates. It is that energetic potential desiring to come forward where we get out of our own way. where we dissolve any of the fears, any of the insecurities, any of the constricted thoughts that are in our mind, any of our limitations. It's where the sorcerer, the warrior heart, the alchemist, the artist comes alive within us, where we are resourced, where we wield the sword with discernment, where we go into battle, slaying our inner demons, destroying what no longer serves us within so we can experience everything we desire throughout. We alchemize the stone-cold heart. 
the stubborn mind, the energy that has solidified as stress in our body, the thought forms that act as barriers to our freedom and liberation. Now, passion, as with anything, can be supportive or destructive. Passion unbridled may lead us in directions that provide infinite opportunities for growth. Challenge after challenge after challenge after challenge. Chasing greed. Chasing power. Chasing control. Creating a whirlwind of experiences in our life. Setting energy in motion that reflects back on us as heaps of stress, of physical manifestations of pain, of trauma, of disease, of discomfort, of illness. Now passion with integrity, discernment, and reverence. That leads us to our purpose on purpose, fully committed. Where passion is an expression of our deep devotion to our soul's yes and our heartfelt desire. Where we give permission to be a conduit, to be a vessel, to be a resource of infinite creative intelligence. Of where we give ourselves permission to be ourself fully activated and charged in that space. Without judgment, without rationalization. Without justification, we light up from within, we radiate, we exude confidence, we magnetize what is for us as it shows up because we show up as ourself, for ourself, fully embodied and integrated. And how powerful is that? Now, does this mean that we have to be full bore with a big Yahoo and a big fuck yeah, carrying around flags, speaking on megaphones, blasting who we are? No. There is a casual confidence. Passion is simply the expression of our deepest devotion and aligned with our purpose as we embody its presence within and express throughout. So when we embrace the fire within, it's that passion that we accept, that we give ourselves permission to be fueled by, that our furnace is generating the heat necessary to light the way that we are driven by that heartfelt desire when we accept it when we embody it when we integrate that into our life our purpose reveals itself we are on purpose and a lot of the conversation wrapped around purpose is finding our purpose what is my purpose why am i here The big existential question of what the fuck am I doing here? And sometimes it carries a weight along with that. Let's step aside from the heaviness of that. Let's vaporize the heaviness that's associated with purpose. The bigness of it. And let's just break it down. What brings you joy when you think about it? Let's just say it's avocados. For some reason, simply thinking about avocados brings a smile to my face. My breathing slows down a bit. Or sometimes I get even a bit excited. Get charged. Time freezes in that moment. I might even think about the last recipe or the next preparation. I might think about the vibrant green of it. I might think about the gifts that my daughters have given me because I love avocados so much. There's a feeling that occupies my being, a palpable one that we feel in our body. So what is it that brings you joy? A sense of freedom or lightness? Maybe even a deep feeling of accomplishment, of satisfaction. No judgment, no rationalization, no justifying, just blurt it out. It's an opportunity for you to be as real as you can be with yourself. 
Even if nothing brings you joy, name it, claim it. Who are we beneath all the protective layers of perceived safety? Let's just say it's nothing. Here's the exercise. Say it preferably out loud, nothing brings me joy. Let's repeat it three times. Nothing brings me joy. Nothing brings me joy. Nothing brings me joy. Let's repeat it one more time, though slowing it down to feel each word. Nothing brings me joy. Feel how it moves through your mind and your body. Feel what it would be like to experience more of it. Get so curious as to what more of nothing would feel like. Remove any of the barriers that come up. Any judgment, rationalization, justification, fear. Remove it all. Get curious about what more of it would feel like. What does any of this have to do with purpose? In this example, it could be that we realize that the feeling of nothing brings me joy is inaccurate. That doesn't feel right. That we don't really want more of nothing. That maybe there is something that brings me joy. Creating an opening. So we recognize the emotional tie. We recognize where our barriers are that are holding us back from opening up to our joy. Or it could bring forward that there is a desire for greater peace. Nothing brings me joy. Maybe I just accumulate so much stuff and I'm always just grasping at everything. I need more, 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 more. And maybe when I say nothing brings me joy, there's a deeper peace in the vacuum of non-attachment. So again, what does this have to do with purpose? What does this exercise offer? When we get curious about what lights us up, we expand beyond our thinking mind and activate dormant neural pathways. We tap into the creative intelligence, something beyond our routine, our day-to-day, -day, the same old, same old. And we open to the new, new, beyond the beyond. It's an opportunity to experience our own divinity of where it creates an opening to explore our contribution, our why, our soul's yes, beyond thought, beyond action, beyond knowing. When our yearning is embodied, we are living on purpose and within purpose. As Benjamin and Azria Becker say in their book, Becoming, it's the choiceless choice. What brings me joy is just an opening for us. It provides a pathway to explore in the journey of self-discovery. And when we open that up, there is an empowerment that comes forward. There is a sense of belonging here, even if it's as simple as avocados. Bring me joy. How does that serve me? How does that relate to my purpose? Well, avocados bring me so much joy. How can I share that joy with others? Maybe I could be an avocado farmer. Maybe I can create an incredible guacamole recipe. Maybe I can figure out a way to utilize the avocado in a work of art. It's simply following what brings us joy, what lights us up. It necessarily doesn't need to be the avocado. Really what it is, is the core energetic of where we begin to follow what lights us up, of where we begin to make that choiceless choice. It's made for us because it is paving the way for us. It's like gold bricks are being laid out before us and we begin to walk the yellow brick road. Though we're not the one laying the bricks. We are simply just taking the step and it's appearing before us. We give ourselves permission to say yes to our soul. We give ourselves permission to be fueled by our passion. We give ourselves permission 
to forgive ourselves of our past. We give ourselves permission to not worry about the future. We give ourselves permission to be fully present right here in this moment. So as to not overthink, over intellectualize, to seek incessantly for it, make it any harder than we need to. And what if our purpose is simply to be ourself? Presence, embodying our passion and our purpose, where presence is meditation in motion, an active participation with the eternal, timeless stillness beyond the construct of time, where we are with what is in front of us, fully embodied, integrated, merged with the infinite right here and now, fully experiencing the moment without attachment. There's no noise, there's no static, no interference. The silence between the notes. In Nada Yoga, which is the yoga of sound, it's referred to as Paranada, beyond sound. The infinite reservoir of the eternal now. And presence isn't a self-serving directive with a myopic worldview. Rather, we are here and there. Always, in always, being with it, all of it, fully resourced. We are a resource, a carbon copy, a divine reflection. We shift from going with the flow to being flow. There's a conscious awareness that reveals and acknowledges itself without attachment. It's our innate frequency that's in coherence. It's who we are. It's being in harmony within and throughout. Of when I am with you, I am with you. When I am with me, I am with me. At the same time, I am participating with it all. Presence is the gift of being fully embodied and integrated in our truth. When we embrace the fire within, when we give ourselves permission to show up, to fully show up, we express our passion, we embody our purpose, and we emanate presence. There's no longer the need to seek approval. There is no longer the need to perform. There's no longer the need to compete, to persuade, to abuse, to accept less than what we know to be true, to try to fix anything outside of us to hold back from activities that we enjoy, people that we enjoy, experiences that we desire. There's no need to sacrifice part of ourself just to belong. There's no longer a need to repress our feelings, our sexual desires, there's no longer a need to avoid conflict just to play it safe. There's no longer the need to engage in conflict, to gain control. There's no longer the feeling that we've only tapped into a fraction of our potential. There's no longer the feeling of being stuck, of like we're not good enough, or that we're not worthy of what we truly desire. There's no longer that urge to say yes when we really mean to say no. When we live on purpose, operating from the energetic expression of our passion, our soul's yes, our heartfelt desire, 
our most intimate and expansive vision of what we know to be true has no other option than to show up because we are fully embodied as we integrate our passion, our purpose, and our presence within and experience it throughout. This is what our birthright is. This is what we are here for. This is our call to show up. This is the new paradigm. This is the new warrior mentality. This is the embodied masculine. This is embracing the fire within. The days of the lone wolf are over. We are so much better together. So much love and gratitude for showing up, for being here, for being present, for continuing to move forward day after day, for saying yes to you, for saying yes to life. We are the transition team. And as it said, we didn't come this far only to get this far. Regardless of how old we are in our experience, each day is an opportunity to revitalize, to renew, to recharge, to be fully resourced, to express our passion, to embody our purpose, to emanate presence. And if this message resonates, please share it with your social media, pass it on to a friend or a family member or partner. And remember, we are better together. I love you all. As the sun rises, we wake each day with a question. You know what that question is, don't you? The one that rests in the cavities of your subconscious, playing hide and seek, knocking at the temples of your conscience. It's not so much the question. It's that you know the answer. You know, it's right there. You could just about touch it, taste it. I know you've been there. Yeah, you've seen the light. That inner glow from the depths of your soul. It's calling out to you. You too are a seeker for the beacon that shines inside. Are you ready to take it to another level? High above the sky, yet deep within your soul. Elevate, 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 elevate.